Hi, this is Darren Marlia, head of product at Semparis. Today I'm going to talk about protecting against a Mimi Cat's DC shadow attack with Semparis's DS Protector product. But first, let me talk a little bit about who Semparis is and what we do. So we're focused on enterprise identity protection, and we help organizations all over the world both recover from cyber breaches and directory services failures in on-prem and cloud-based Active Directory deployments, as well as the ability to do change tracking and rollback of critical changes to Active Directory. Now, what is DC Shadow? This is really a switch on the Mimi Cats utility that was introduced a little time ago that allows you to inject changes into Active Directory without normal detection. So what it does is it spins up a fake Active Directory domain controller that can be detected in the security event log, but then that fake domain controller pushes changes into AD using replication that are not detected by the security event log. So you've got a set of operations that are both partly visible, but then don't give you any insight into what was actually changed. So just to see this graphically, you've got your fake domain controller, which can be really any Windows server, and Mimikatz running on it. Essentially what it does is it creates a temporarily DC, temporary DC object in the config naming context, just enough and keeps it there long enough to push AD changes into a, an existing read-write domain controller. Those changes show up in Active Directory and then get replicated around, but they never show up in the security event log on that originating DC. So how does Semparis help? Well, number one, we can identify those changes to AD sites and services. In other words, we can notify you if a temporarily added DC shows up. This might indicate a DC shadow attack. Now that's important in and of itself, but unique to DSP, we can actually detect the change, the actual change that's replicated by DC shadow and allow you to undo that change. And the reason for this is that we don't rely 100% on the security event logs. In fact, we use the replication API to be able to detect that a change has happened in Active Directory and then let you undo that change. So this is kind of a strength of DSP. So let's go ahead and dig in and look at how this works. Now, remember that DC Shadow is actually a mode within Mimikatz that allows a privileged user, and that's an important point, you need to be privileged on AD in the first place to be able to use DC Shadow, but let's assume that you're a privileged user. It allows you to inject changes into Active Directory by essentially standing up a fake domain controller and injecting those changes using normal replication mechanisms. Now, because the changes are originated on the fake domain controller, security event logs on domain controllers don't ever see those changes, and so they can essentially go unchecked. So let me show you a little bit about how that works. Now, I've got this user called Totally Pwned, and we're going to essentially look at this user. He's got no privileges in the system. He's just a regular domain user. I'm going to go ahead and grab his distinguished name. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come into my Mimikatz console here. And you'll notice that I have Mimikatz up and running in two separate windows. One is running as local system and the other is running as a essentially a user that has the ability to create objects within the configuration naming context, and I'll show you why in a second. Now, I'm going to go ahead and add a SID history on this user of the enterprise admins SID. So I'm essentially using a method even more sneaky than adding the user to a group, which might get detected, but I'm actually going to add this enterprise admin SID to their SID history attribute. So I'm going to go ahead and tell DC Shadow to add this, and it's going to sit here and wait for me in this other window to push the change into Active Directory. So I'm going to go ahead and say DC Shadow push. And now if I come over to Active Directory Sites and Services, I'm not going to see anything here because this server basically registered a new server in the default first site name site, pushed the change into my Active Directory, and then unregistered that server. Now, that particular event is caught in the security event log because essentially we're making a change on an existing DC, in this case, ADSM DC1. And so I will see that in the security event log, and I can audit on 
on it and notify on it. And I'll show you that in DSP in a second. But the change I made to the enterprise admins, putting enterprise admins into the SID doesn't show up. So now what we've got is the totally pwned user has been essentially elevated to SID, to enterprise admins using SID history. The change itself has not been recorded by the by Active Directory security event log. So how do we know about it? How do we detect that this happens? And this is where DSP comes into play. So if I come over to DSP, DSP will show me all the changes that are happening in Active Directory. And here you see my totally pwned users SID history changed from not set to that enterprise admins SID. Now, why did why were we be able to detect this and other tools that rely on the security event log on the domain controller not? Well, we're using the replication API that Microsoft implements for domain controllers to talk to each other to be able to get changes to Active Directory and store them in our repository. Now, you'll notice that the change by field is empty. This is because we would normally get this from the security event log, but because there was no security event log, that field is blank, and that in and of itself is a suspicious entry. Now, what you will notice is that temporary server object created in Sites and Services does show up. And in fact, I had set up an email notification to tell me if any objects were created in Active Directory Sites and Services. And sure enough, this rule fired when I ran that DC Shadow and showed me that this object was temporarily created. So I'm able to see the activity in two separate ways. And in fact, if you look at MITRE, MITRE is a security organization that issues a lot of standards and best practices. On their DC Shadow page, they talk about detection using two mechanisms. One is to literally use the Active Directory synchronization mechanism to monitor changes to directory state, and that's basically what we're doing with DSP. And second, periodically analyze the config partition and alert on the creation of new server objects, which is exactly what we're doing as well. So we've got both of those areas covered, and we're able to see when those DC shadow attacks happen. And then of course, you can simply right click on this and undo the change to that user's SID history attribute, and away you go. You've basically undone the SID history attack that uh, somebody with DC Shadow access has executed on your system. So the bottom line here is that DSP is able to see changes that happen to Active Directory that tools that just rely on the domain controller security event logs will never see. Uh, we'll also see those changes that happen through the security event logs, but we don't rely on them. We use that information to enrich the change items and give you the ability to not only see those changes, but also roll back those changes. Well, thanks for watching this video. I hope it was informative and gave you an idea of how Semperis DSP can help with not just DC Shadow, but any number of Active Directory based change scenarios that might come across your environment. For more information, you can contact us at the information shown on the screen to get consultation, product demos, free trials, and proof of concepts. Thank you.